Good day, you beautiful people of YouTube. It's the Mad Marine here, and today we've got a kind of a treat. This is another SBR. Um, but before we go any further, we're going to do a fantastic safety check. But I will ask again if you would be so kind as to subscribe. That helps the channel out, and of course, share. And of course, I always appreciate your comments below. And if any of you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm glad to help, uh, whether it's a question with one of my builds or if it's just a general question. I'm happy to spread knowledge and uh, help you guys out any way I can. So let's go ahead and do a quick safety check. Now, if you'll go ahead and see, the weapon is on fire. Very scary. We're going to go ahead and drop the magazine. Nothing in the mag. We're going to pull it to the rear. Send it. And nothing in the chamber. Nothing on the bolt. No mag inserted. I don't know if you can get the angle on that one. We're going to go ahead and send it forward. We're going to go ahead and aim the barrel at the fridge. We're going to pull the trigger, fire, and the fridge lives one more day. All right, we're going to throw in this empty magazine and back in here just for aesthetics. And we're going to talk about this thing. Now, some of you may recognize the emblem. And I did not do a fabulous job painting this. I will eventually get around to fixing it, but it's kind of cool. And if you haven't figured it out, this is a Resident Evil kind of gun. It is the Hive, Raccoon City. And uh, they are remaking that. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. The other thing is um, it uh, it's kind of a cool... Uh, this is a registered SBR. So, again, it is under 16-inch barrel length. And it has a stock on it. So, it means you need to file a Form 1. Or if I were to transfer this to someone, a Form 4. And as you can see, it has Umbrella Corporation. It has the Umbrella logo. Restricted for law or for corporate use only and then the uh, umbrella corp lower And if you send it forward like this or send the uh, bolt through we can now see the uh, other side of the dust cover Raccoon City the hive so this gun is uh, themed for kind of the first Resident Evil the hive in Raccoon City um, I do not have a rear sight on it currently. I pulled the one off and have a new one on order, and it should be here Saturday, but I couldn't wait. So I just wanted to show this to you guys. Really cool gun. Um, so I, some of you guys are going to say, like, I want to recreate this, and I will tell you, <laughs> you, uh, you might be in a little bit of trouble as far as trying to recreate this. One is I cannot get you this lower. Uh, it is not made by Umbrella Corp. And if you can find an Umbrella Corp lower, it's going to cost you probably almost $400, and that was pre-COVID prices. It now being COVID prices, I have no idea what that would cost you for a real Umbrella Corp ones. Most of the time, they're back-ordered or sold out, and the only places to find them is on Gunbroker, and again, they're $400. Bucks. So in a real lower Umbrella Corp lower um, that is licensed, you're probably not going to be able to find. However... Um, this may not be a 2020 thing currently because it is 2020, but what we could possibly do is a lot of manufacturers will have these blank face lowers and so they'll have the manufacturing stuff and a serial number on it and it'll say like Anderson or Palmetto or something like that. But a lot of places will laser engrave whatever emblem you want, just send them whatever it is you want. So that's what you need to do. Send them a... Um, you know, a picture of the umbrella logo, they'll cut something out, and there you go. Now you have your lower that's kind of themed. Uh, these umbrella corp lowers are actually usually in stock, so that's good. I went with the Strike Industries uh, butt stock here, I really enjoy it. Um, one thing to be careful of is this is made by Strike Industries. I don't know if you can tell real well, but that's their um, <sighs> buffer tube, and this is made by Strike Industries as well this stock and if you look i don't know if i can get this in the frame here these two reds are actually kind of different they're not really the same so be very careful when buying brands again this red is off a little bit it's not a hundred percent but it actually looks worse in camera than it does in real life but um, the reds are close but not not to a hundred percent and even the red here is a little bit off um, compared to everything else and again this is strike industries who makes this and who makes this? And it's all three different colors. And I don't know. I, I don't know what to do there. Maybe I just need to send it someplace to get custom done to make it a little bit better. Um, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is. As is. 
I believe this is in a 10 and a half inch barrel and it's fun to shoot. Uh, I always like the fixed front sights. It's just me for mostly, mostly if I were to run some type of scope, I would probably go without the fixed iron sights. I'd probably, but me personally, I always like the, this, it gives me something if the EOTech fails or something else. And this is the EOTech 511 and I'll see if I can get it in here. But anyway, I mean, if you've seen an EOTech, I'll just bump the camera, so that's probably no good. If you've seen an EOTech, you've seen them all. Um, I actually don't like this model. And the reason why, it's kind of plagued with some problems, like the batteries will run out, uh, will still run while it's even off. It's kind of annoying. Um, and it's a very old model, but I got a good deal on it, so maybe I shouldn't complain too much about it. But anyway, this is my cool little SBR. It's fun to shoot. It is ridiculously loud. One thing about SBRs, guys, when you're doing these is um, understand you're losing a lot of muzzle velocity with a short barreled rifle and that's maybe not always the best thing also uh, they're extraordinarily loud which uh, can be annoying especially for an indoor range uh, for yourself and for other shooters and the other thing is is be careful because again there's no um, your, the muzzle velocity on this, you're uh, losing the muzzle velocity, but also uh, you're not even burning through all your powder when you're firing your rounds. So you're burning through a lot of it, or you're not even burning all your powder, so you're seeing a lot of powder forward. But anyway, I will put up um, some of my build for this one eventually. I'll get a spreadsheet together and throw that on there. Just something I wanted to share with you. Oh, I did want to talk about the trigger. Um, this is a Davis Defense trigger and i like it it's not bad it's not great um but i do like it and it um it's a pretty quick reset trigger i think it was under 100 bucks are there better triggers out there for the money absolutely um, but this is something fun to play with and it has a nickel boron bolt are these worth it no they're not uh, honestly a standard bolt is fine you don't need anything crazy or fancy guys um it was just something fun i think i got this on sale would I buy another nickel boron bolt? bolt? No, I'm not going to buy another one. It is what it is. Just wanted to share it with you guys, and I will catch you later. Hope you've enjoyed it. Again, please like, subscribe, share, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye.